what's up? This is Odolena from Odolena Digital and today we're going to talk about how to optimize smart bidding campaigns. Welcome to my channel. Be sure to subscribe. Uh, here I post a video every week about pay-per-click advertising with Google and Facebook ads. I am a Google employee, however, all the information that's shared in this website is publicly available and it's just my personal um, kind of reading of this information uh, with my own opinion based on my own knowledge on digital marketing. So having said that, today we're going to talk about smart bidding optimization. So uh, if you're not aware uh, about smart bidding, you can watch another video that I created earlier on that, uh, on that topic. Basically, smart bidding means that instead of you putting a bid with Google Ads, let's say you bid for every keyword or for different creatives that you want to appear on different places, your, your ads, uh, instead of that, you can just let a machine to do this for you, which is called smart bidding. So the solutions from Google are um, smart bidding strategies like target CPA or target cost per acquisition, target ROAS, target return on ad spend, maximize conversions, etc. So all these strategies basically are trying to get you a certain result for the money that you have, the budget that you have, uh, and they are trying to do this automatically based on all the data that Google has. So uh, they kind of take into, into consideration uh, how many uh, times the user has searched the same thing before, what they have been searching before that, what they have been watching, what kind of apps that they have installed on Android and all this kind of information. And uh, with based on this context, they adjust uh, the bid for you. Whereas normally advertisers would do this manually, they would create scripts or they would use some kind of their own um, bidding solution. Uh, so today I'm gonna talk a little bit about how these uh, smart bidding strategies work and how to assess performance and understand actually what's the result of your efforts. So first of all, um, one very, very important thing before you start running any smart bidding campaign is to allow something called a control period. So this has to be at least maybe a couple of weeks before you start uh, running the campaign. In this period, you wouldn't be doing any changes to your campaign uh, just to make sure that you have data on how it performs with manual bidding without any seasonal changes, without any big fluctuations. So just you can compare before and after and see the results. Another thing that you have to pay attention to once you start the smart bidding uh, campaign is uh, actually the duration of its learning period. So here uh, I have created what you would normally see in your uh, smart bidding report. So for every campaign that runs on smart bidding, you will have this report in Google Ads. Uh, basically, this shows you the blue line is showing you the number of conversions and the red line is showing you the cost per conversion. So as you can see, quite often when you get a lot of conversions, then the, co the conversion cost uh, is lower and etc. Sometimes you will have periods where you have like one very expensive conversion and typically you will see something like this. So how do you read this table? Um, so first of all, it's very important to understand, and here you will see some indications on the bottom uh, of the axis. Uh, you will see, for example, this gray area, uh, which is about two to three weeks, depending on how much data you have in advance on your campaign. Uh, this is the learning period. So make sure that you don't uh, count this as smart bidding period for your campaign. You might experience some big uh, influxes of conversions on a very low cost per conversion, then it goes the opposite way, maybe it spends a lot and then it stops spending. But as long as the campaign is labeled as in learning, you should not make any changes and not try to adjust it, let it run, uh, because in this way the machine is trying to understand, is trying to test different strategies to make sure that they achieve the result that you want to achieve. If the learning period takes way too long, it might mean two things. It might mean either that you don't have enough uh, history, so it's very difficult for uh, the machine uh, learning uh, to learn, uh, which is very rarely now the case because it has been designed to actually work without any account history, without uh, zero information. 
uh, or it might be uh, that you have put a very unrealistic target CPA. So let's say your cost per acquisition is much, much lower compared to what you were getting before that. And just the machine is not able to find enough opportunities for your ads to appear. So if that's the case, you can just try changing it. However, normally it will take two to three weeks for a machine uh, learning based strategy to, to learn and to finish its learning period. Then you have a green shiny period where you have stable performance. It might not be as great as the one that you saw here. So the cost of conversion is a bit higher, but the volume is also stable. It's not huge, but it's kind of okay, flattish. So you have this um, period where you don't have any interference. So this must be just without any uh, label here. Uh, no problems, not, nothing has been done, nothing has been, has been changed on the campaign. So this means that the campaign is basically very stable over this period. This is the time frame that you can compare to your control period. So let's say if you have a control period of one week, you must have at least one week here where you have no uh, limitations on the campaign. It has been not been restricted. It has not experienced any time lag, delays or anything like that. Uh, and you will see all these uh, labeled here on the bottom axis. So you need a clear period in order to compare to your control. Then uh, you might see this. Uh, so this is usually red. Uh, so that will be limited by budget. So there are periods where your campaign has been limited by budget. And on that sense, you cannot expect to see the same results. So how it works is that actually smart bidding campaigns should not be limited by budget except for maximized conversions, which is trying to get as many conversions as possible with whatever budget you give it. Uh, so it will be limited by budget by default. However, the other um, target uh, return on ad spend or target uh, cost per acquisition CPA, uh, they must not be limited by budget because this limits the campaign's performance. Uh, it makes the algorithm struggle. It's just not performing as a real um, smart bidding strategy, which is supposed to be. So you must exclude any period when uh, the campaign has been limited by budget from your assessment of performance. And finally, you will see one blue area towards the end of the axis. And this is uh, an expecting, expecting more conversions. So depending on your conversion lag or how much time it takes for a user from clicking on an ad to uh, taking the action that you want to them to take, let's say filling out a form or um, making a purchase, whatever it is that they, you want them to do on your website. So if it's taking, so in some cases it takes one day, but you have to check. It might be taking, in some cases it might take two, three, even 10 days, depending on the conversion lag. So here at the end of your uh, axis, so the closest it is to the, uh, to the today's date, uh, you will have a conversion delay. So you might be seeing more conversions coming in, which are not reported yet. They're not attributed to this campaign. Uh, and you must wait uh, enough time for you to, to be able to assess this period. So uh, in the best case, you should exclude this as well. So what you're left is the period that's outside of learning, outside of being limited by budget and outside of the conversion time lag. This is the only time which you can compare to uh, the period before that. So in this way, you can actually optimize and understand uh, how it performed, whether here you got better cost per conversion on a higher volume, or maybe the volume was lower, but the cost per conversion was better. And you can make adjustments on based on this. So you can, let's say, increase the target CPA, the target cost per acquisition, or you can uh, reduce the um, return on ad spend, make it a little bit more realistic, and play with this and see how the volume of conversions is fluctuating based on this. Remember that whenever you adjust the target of the smart bidding campaign, it will immediately go into a learning phase. So uh, this will again put it in this learning period, which you'll have to wait in order to assess the performance. This is all from me for today. Thanks so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel and I'll see you on next Sunday.